Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Board Game Breakfast Live. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Sam Healy, large and in charge. What's up? We are Sans Tom Vassal today. The Hello. cat's away. The mice are going to play? The mice will play. I like my pronunciation of Sans. It's very sans. like... Sans? It's like uh, French? What? No. <laughs> that word says Sans. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, today, before we kick it off, I'd like to do a couple of shout-outs to some fantastic folks out cool. there uh, for supporting us. First off, all the wonderful game gurus at Bastard Cafe in Copenhagen, Denmark. Denmark. Thank you, y'all, for supporting us and helping us out. Keep Go on keep on gaming. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Uh, next up, uh, Hilmar, the Drupal Viking, who, who I happen to know from Iceland. Excellent person, excellent uh, proponent of the hobby. Thank you very, very much. Cool. And then lastly, Gregory Huber, or Huber, uh, I say Huber. That's how you say Huber? it. Huber? Huber. 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 Gregory, thank you very much as well Huber. to you. All right, there it is, Huber. some shout outs. We'll we keep go. on doing some of those Sweet. in upcoming videos. But again, to just everybody who supported us, a big thanks. And stay tuned for our upcoming Kickstarter a little later, uh, the beginning of next year. Welcome to those in chat as well. I'll be keeping an eye on you, so don't, don't get out of line. <laughs> I was gonna. Say, I thought you were gonna say don't forget to participate, but uh, but also <laughs> watch yourselves. I guess. All right, let's kick it off with some news. Here we go. All right. All right, let's talk about some news here. We're going to kick it off with some Alexa from Amazon. Alexa? Alexa can now teach you uh, Days of Wonder games, specifically Ticket to Ride. So you can play Ticket to Ride with your Alexa nearby. Uh, it'll teach you Ticket to Ride or Ticket to Ride Europe and uh, walk you through how to play the game. So a really neat concept here, bringing in one of these assistant speakers to help with gaming. It's a cool idea, it's a, it's a neat push. It's something that I feel like it's been sprinkled out there before, but I don't think ever with a game this big. No. From Days of Wonder, that, that game that is you know really everywhere, you can get it just about anywhere, it, it dips its toe into that mass market. Mm -hmm. World, I think honestly at this point you could say Ticket to Ride feels like a mass market game. It is in Target, it is in so it's many places. It's kind of strange though, right? Yeah, it's like it's very, um, it's very easy to find and it is, it, most people have likely seen its seen cover it. if nothing yeah. else. Right. So there you go, Alexa I didn't, will. I didn't uh, even know Alexa was a board gamer. Alexa is into gaming uh, for sure and she, uh, I'm sure you can ask her and she'll tell you her favorite board games or just be like, I, I, couldn't find that. Would you like me to search the internet or something? Hmm. I don't know. She does. She does whatever she wants to do. Yeah, she AI, does. baby. I, for one, welcome our uh, intellectual made-up overlords. Yeah. Uh, these skills to teach the game, by the way, are in English or French uh, for those in the U.S., the U.K., and France. Next up, we're going to be taking a look here at uh, Fairy Trails. Fairy Trails is a new Uva Rosenberg game uh, for one to two players. Uh, it's from a new publisher as well, Paper Plane Games. And in it, one player is going to represent elves, the other player is gnomes, and you want to give your creatures completed homes first in order to win the game. Uh, it's a tile game, one tile starts face up on the table. While each player has a hand of two tiles, and on your turn, you just place one adjacent to one or more already in play. The edges uh, of each are going to contain paths in pink for the elves, yellow for the gnomes, and uh, even though those paths can terminate on tiles instead of continuing on when you're trying to do that sometimes, you are trying to close your paths. Is there some connection between fairies and elves that I just don't know about? Because that, like, that looks like a fairy. It doesn't look like an elf. Not that I know of. I yeah. think sh it might just be an elf wearing a costume. I don't think she has wings. I think she's wearing wings. 
She's an elf cosplaying as a fairy. That's right. Got it. Okay. That's right. That's cool. Uh, so there you go. That is upcoming. Next up, we've got a follow-up to the uh, original Undaunted yeah, yeah. Normandy. Uh, this is Undaunted North, North Africa. Africa. Uh, you're going to be taking control of the British Army's long-range desert group and operate behind enemy lines to command the formidable Italian forces uh, opposing them. So one player will be the Italian force. And uh, the game, once again, you're going to lead the sides in, on missions. As casualties mount, wounded soldiers leave the player's decks, forcing them to adapt in the face of changing tactical circumstances. And you're using your cards, of course, to strengthen your forces, to deploy vehicles, to uh, advance rapidly across the battlefield. Huh. And to seize the initiative as you determine the outcome of the North African yeah, theater. One of, one of the big things is that they're adding tanks to this. Mm -hmm. They're adding tanks to the whole system. So that's going to be cool. I wonder if there are going to be any Germans at all, though. I wonder it if it's just... I know, it just like says it. Italians, yeah. but that would be cool. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. But uh, I know the uh, first game was very well received. So it's nice to see them continue supporting this line of games, this undaunted line of games. Fairy trails to you. Kabuki Kid. Sorry. I like it. I like I it. I had to. I had to. <laughs> she put it in my head. The always Sorry. reliable Kabuki Kid. Yes, that is very true. All right, next up, let's talk about Brain Games and Luma here. Uh, Baltic publisher Brain Games has entered into a distribution agreement with Canadian publisher slash distributor Luma Games. Uh, and they are going to be, uh, they have now, Luma has exclusive English language distribution of its titles That's in cool. the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and on top of that Luma Games is going to quote unquote here uh, manage Brain Games French catalog for Canada's French language market mm -hmm. there you go just a little business news uh, if you are interested next up uh, we're taking a look here at some of the games that were announced over the Tokyo game market. Some really interesting stuff here that I'm excited about. So we've got Remember Our Trip at the top there. It's kind of a puzzly, sort of a town building game from designers Saashi and Daryl Chow. And the publisher, of course, Saashi and Saashi, whose games I, uh, I really enjoy. I like their look and I like the games. They're... they're um, they know what they're doing over there. I really enjoy that. Oink Games is a new design from their founder, Jun Sasaki. A two to four player uh, uh, game titled Faf Fafnir. And it's, uh, it's one of those games in which you are collecting things to trade for other things. We don't know too much about it beyond that. But um, Jun Sasaki knows, again, what they are doing. Next up, we got one from uh, Hisashi Hayashi of Ozaku brand. And they have designed a game called Goat and Goat. Goat and goat. I like it. Goat and goat. Goat and goat. So it's like greatest of greatest of all time and the goat. Goat and goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. Uh, a card <laughs> game for two to five players, um, and then also the party game uh, distance from here, which is for for two to eight players. So again. These are announced for the Tokyo game market. Lots of good stuff usually comes out of there. That's cool. So pretty neat. All right, next up we've got another release in the Unmatched Ooh. line. I was really excited when I saw this cover and heard about it. Cobble and Frog. And Fog. So yeah, Frog works too. That would work, I suppose. There's, there better be at least one Frog card. I must card have been thinking it. about Frogs subconsciously mm -hmm. as I looked at the word Fog. I guess so, because there's no why would R I in say it. say frog? Because it's not there. Can you read? I can. So, yeah, that must have been thinking of frogs. Then. <laughs> All right, this is going to feature four new characters, of course, for the unmatched system. Invisible Smart. Man, He's who uses uh, fog to dart around the board and strike without warning. Sounds why? really cool. Why would... Wait a minute. Why would the Invisible Man use fog to dart around the board? He's already invisible. That's what he wants. Fog would give away where he was. No, why are you thinking about this so hard? <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock, with his trusty Watson by his side, schemes and calculates to ensure victory. We've got Dracula, Dracula. Uh, who is going to slowly drain you of your power, i.e., I assume, your blood. <laughs> Get it? I like, I like that. That sounds good, Dracula. Yeah. And then lastly, Jekyll and Hyde, who's going to use uh, uh, Jekyll's cunning and Hyde's brute strength and win the day. So there you go. That is pretty cool. I am very excited about this, and wouldn't I like be, the theming on this one. Wouldn't it be cool if Jekyll was the really strong one and Hyde 
was the really smart one, but they didn't. But they looked the same. And you couldn't tell when he was one or the other. Eh. No, no, no. They didn't look the same. It's like he still changes in to hide. Uh huh. And it still looks like this beast dude, Uh but he's weak. But he's really smart. Got it. So he has to look like a monster to actually be bright. Yes. But he's not very strong. When he becomes a diminute man, yes. suddenly he can Ooh. fling you about the room. Diminute. Now that's a word. You like that one? Uh-huh. Pull that out of it. It's the word of the day. That's, that's a root word. That's <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got some smash-up news here. Uh, AEG is going to partner with the op. We are calling them the op, the OP. Sure. I forget. I, I knew this. I I'm forget. I'm telling you, Ocean, Spe- Ocean Pacific is, gonna, is right mm, around the corner. They're going to mm. do something. Some nice shorts. Uh, to bring officially licensed factions to Smash Up starting in 2020. Uh, what those factions are is, as of right now, still a mystery. But again, they are partnering in order to license things that the uh, op has uh, access to. So, you know, speculate away, I guess, but expect to see lots of popular IPs make it over to Smash Up with their own decks. And then you can mix that with aliens or fairies riding gophers or whatever it is. All joking aside about the OP, that is a cool thing they're going to sure. be able to do. And if ever a game was exactly made to Well, they've already start kind of been adding, doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all been tongue-in-cheek. Now it doesn't have to be tongue-in-cheek anymore. Right, exactly, exactly. Now it can be licensed and you can... Uh, finally get exactly what you want you know the licenses they have access to or some of them are uh again i'm not saying that these are coming out but they have access to them now you've got uh, harry potter you've got munchkin you've got uh talisman and uh, kingdom hearts bob's burgers marvel apparently they did a munchkin marvel so who knows we don't know what's coming here yeah that's cool so stay tuned for that one uh all right, and then finally here, we've got the most influential board games of the decade according to top designers. This is something that uh, Polygon uh, published. They published an article with Rob Davio, Elizabeth Hargrave, Volko Runke, and James Stegmeier choosing their most influential games of the decade, which is pretty cool. So here, I'll give you the breakdown of what they said. Uh, so Rob Davio said, Seven Wonders, Zombicide, and Time Stories. Solid list. Elizabeth Hargrave said almost the exact same three games. She said Seven Wonders, Time Stories, but no Zombicide. She said The Castles of Burgundy. Again, very strong selection there. Uh, Volko Runke, who I think is a war game designer possibly, chose Freedom of the Underground Railroad, Andy and Abyss, and Churchill Big Three Struggle for Peace. And then Jamie Stegmeier picked Seven Wonders Duel, Lords of Waterdeep slash Game of Thrones, the board game, and Terra Mystica. So, pretty neat to see these people who are deep into the hobby, affecting that hobby, look back and select some games that are influential, that kind of shaped the decade in their minds. Hmm. I was really interested to see Seven Wonders show up a couple of times and Time Stories. Time Stories, I think, is an easy one to see. Yeah, I do. Some of those other picks, though, I kind of scratch my head on. But this is this is one of those articles that you you really can't argue with that right, much of course, because yeah. they're such. You know, it's like arguing with an expert. You make yourself sound stupid. Well, it's also Just, their opinion of right, what was very exactly. important. In the yeah, decade, yeah, yeah. What I mean, it's the from day. their perspective. It's right. like speaking to a musician about what influenced them mm-hmm. so right. you can't really argue with it. i am curious if these were uh if they picked their games in a bubble because if so if there was no communication there back and forth i think it's really neat that both uh davio and hargrave put two of their three picks are the same yeah that's pretty neat well it's you know pretty <laughs> yeah pointed right so there you go and that's going to do it for our news everybody now let's check out some more news and uh, maybe even a little war gaming action. Here we go. Hello, fellow gamers. Luckily, we've been able to pull you guys away from Disney Plus and that new Mandalorian show that everybody on the internet is talking about. So we can talk about what's really important in the board game industry, like... Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go watch the show. It's so good. Featured this week, we have Namiji by Funforge, which calls for two to five people looking to do a little fishing while out to sea for about 
30 to 45 minutes. As players will be moving around a track to try and collect fish on their boat, arranging catches by color and shape, or perhaps pushing their luck to try and collect shrimp, sightseeing off the coast, and making offerings to the sea to reduce negative points in this point salad style game that has more ways to score than there are fish in the sea. This designer's edition starts at $67. Next up is Alder Quest by Rock Manor Games that puts one to four furry factions against each other to find the most acorns before winter in about 60 to 90 minutes by building ruined patterns to collect resources for activating cards and relying on strategic movements to avoid player traps, all while trying to play tribute to score points. Starting price for this box full of critters is $39. Speaking of cute little critters on a mission, we have Ducks in Tow by Fish First Games that takes feeding those ducks at a pond to a whole new competitive level for two to four duck enthusiasts, as players will be luring those cute little waddlers to different locations by feeding them the correct food and then collecting cards to create duck formations for about 30 to 60 minutes in this pattern building set collection game that relies on you getting your ducks in a row. Adopting this game for your home will cost $35. And lastly, we have Zoned Out by Gray Fox Games that calls for two to four developers to take action and manage manage city plans by placing city cards, building high-rises, and developing rundown lots into prestigious parks for 30 to 60 minutes. In this tile placement game that utilizes secret goals, strategic grouping for lots and buildings, as well as majority control of skyscrapers to earn points, bringing home this city simulation game starts at $29. Thanks so much for joining us this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the Kickstarters that you saw here today, then join me at glorihound.com as we talk about all of these Kickstarters in depth than if we would back them or not. It is a live show, so you guys get to participate in the conversation and tell us what you guys think. Other than that, I will see you guys all next week. Oh my God, that was rude. Dumb, dumb. I just watched Board Game Breakfast, you know, last week. Let's reconsider this. You know, dumb. Huh? What did I do? You know, stuff like that gets me angry that you don't want to get me in. And, you know, uh, when I get angry, uh, I lose it. You know what I'm saying? <sighs>
and you can't do anything with it because these cards are all for the right side and all your ships are on the left side. So discard a card, draw a card. Next. But when you do have the right cards. <laughs> yeah. Red Alert has 10 scenarios. Each scenario will tell you how many cards in hand you have to have and basically describe how to set up the game. This is an easy game. You can have fun every Saturday morning. You put together the minis and you play. It's great. I like it. The miniatures are great. The inlays are great. And you know what this is? This is a Hollywood blockbuster game. This game can be played with six people, three aside. The guy in the middle, he's the chief in command. He's the guy who gives the okay when you guys discuss what you gotta do to shell like your enemy. I'm in command, Paul, so you shut up! Richard Borg, Plastic Soldier Company. Yeah, winner. I'll see you next week with some more PSC. Everybody, all right. Welcome back to another player stereotypes. Paul is Paul is in, by the way. Paul is in. That's right. I'm sitting in the chair. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Anyway, we're talking about the one and done expert. Mm. Any idea what this might be? Uh, did you hear me talking about it yesterday? And I heard you, I think I did hear you talk about it yeah. briefly, but when you said it out loud, I thought, oh, this is the person who plays a game one time and they know everything there is to know they know more than the designer every place tester like correct. they know where the game is broken or where it's overpowered they know this card should have been caught and removed in play testing and they've played it one time regardless of how many times this game was play tested you have played it once and you know better. Right. Doesn't make sense. That's what this dude is. It also, another shade of this is a person that always just wants to play games that are brand new. He never wants to return, or she, never wants to return to games that they've already played. They're always okay. trying to consume new games. Um, so that's kind of like on the lighter end of it. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That's people like new stuff. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But then you can kind of uh, digress and become very critical about all of these games that you've only played once, thinking that, well, I've played so many games that I only need to play it once and I know everything about it. This feels like a reviewer in the making. This is like, I could be like three times and done sometimes, you know. True, yeah, I can see that. And, and I, that's one of the reasons I actually picked it because I can, I feel myself acting like this. Yeah, like sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we will play something that we don't need to review necessarily, just something we're playing. Like after one play, you feel like you've got everything. And look, maybe you do. Maybe it is a really simple game. But chances are, you don't. Mm -hmm. Because whoever made this thing has gone through iterations of it. They have played it with a bunch of people. They've gotten feedback. They've thought about it. Simply thought about it longer than you have. So there are probably things you don't know. Yeah. It's more the... Uh, I think my issue with this uh, stereotype is, is more the... Uh, when someone is the assertiveness of someone and how truly they how, how strongly and truly they believe that they know best i think that's where it starts to rub me the wrong way mm -hmm. it's not about making comments on something this feels overpowered i don't like this aspect this should have been cut that's fine those are all opinions it's more when you tip a you know tip over into i know for a fact this card is overpowered I know this game is broken because of this thing. Right. Yeah, you might you might want to play it twice yeah. before you say these things. Some of the things people say is, is uh the dark the dark eater the dark tater, sorry, says, Ooh, lots of one and done experts come out of the work work came out of the word work with tapestry. Seems like all Stillmeyer Stillmeyer games bring them out. 
Um, so maybe that's true. Um, uh, Sir Spec says, I hate that I can't get games to the table multiple times. A lot of my group just always wants to play something new. Yes. That's, uh, I mean, there's, and, and that Tom pretty much relies upon that whenever he goes to game nights. Sure. Because there's a cadre of people within our game group that just want to play the, play the new stuff. Right, and we always have to play new things, so yeah. it's part of our job. But, yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, I could see it being a problem. I try to personally just play play stuff i like at home or wherever just for me every now and then as a, as a palate cleanser because that consumption of a new game every time and that you know you, you that uh drive to make snap judgments is, is something you at some point need to push back on yeah april w says it really does take more than one play to understand a game uh sometimes even two or three plays so apparent according to her three and done would be fine cool we're good. Um, We're good. Uh, let's see. She also says, uh, I don't mean to be going on that, but she's, she's, she's often changed her mind about games after multiple plays yeah. uh, because, you know, uh, it's just the way it works. You know, sometimes. Well, especially if you go into something with expectations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It happens with everything. It happens with movies. It happens with games. If mm -hmm. you go into something expecting, oh, this is going to be a, a fast-paced deck-building game. And it's I'm looking for that. And then you realize over the whole game, you only earn four cards, and it's all about making the combos with the cards you already had. Mm -hmm. You might walk out of that session going, oh, it really wasn't, that wasn't that good. I, didn't, I barely got any cards, you know? It didn't really yeah. feel like much of a deck building. Maybe that's not the point. And you went in there with your own preconceptions right. and wrecked it for yourself a little bit. Usually when you have preconceptions like that that are not met, the second play invariably makes you feel better about what you're playing. Mark McNair has a good point here in the chat. He says that one and done experts love to tell you there's a killer strategy because it just so happened to work the one time they played it. Yes. And that's it, right? Yes. You see something that is really overpower overpowered in your play of the game, but it's because of the other factors that were at the right. table, not because your thing is overpowered. And that's it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's cool. So, one and done, be careful. Don't write off a game uh, just because of something that happened in one of your plays. Give it another try yeah. or a you, couple other tries. If you didn't like the game, you, your taste doesn't match with the game, that's fine. I'm mm -hmm. not one of those people who's True. like, oh, you played this game and hated it, you should play it five more yeah, times you did it before wrong. you say you hated it. Nah, no, if you don't nah, like it, you don't cool. like it. But if you think you found something that the designer missed, you're probably wrong. Right. That's true. All right. Well, that's it. One and done experts. Be careful. <laughs> All right. Let's keep on trucking with some segments. Hi, everybody. Hello. We are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about La Isla from Stefan Feld. But before we do, let's talk a little bit about health. So one of the things that I personally am trying to focus on is gaining muscle. I really want to gain muscle um, and sometimes it can be frustrating when you don't think anything is happening but then things start to change so clothes are starting to fit differently because I am gaining muscle and it's awesome I'm getting stronger I like getting stronger so just keep that in mind when you're trying to achieve a goal that there's other things that will happen your clothes will fit better you'll have more energy and it's not just about the scale weight all right, so in La Isla, you are explorers kind of looking for these thought to be extinct animals on this island. Uh, it's one of Stefan Feld's lighter and faster games, but don't let that fool you. It's still got a ton of really great choices and decisions to make. I really, really, really love um, multi-use cards, and this game has it in spades, and I enjoy the gameplay so much. The component quality is... Um, but the gameplay is so much fun that after you're playing for a couple of minutes, you don't even realize how not awesome the component quality is. All right. So, yeah, that's our thoughts on La Isla. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. What matters more, component quality or gameplay? <laughs> if you'd like to hear our full thoughts, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel, Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Have a happy and healthy breakfast. Bye, guys. All right, folks, let's take a break here from Board Game Breakfast. I'm here with Adam and Braid E. Sandler, and these are the team of designers that are putting out a lot of games, actually, these days. Trying when did you all start designing? 
uh, ten years ago, so, roughly. Yeah, about ten years Professionally, ago. yeah, like about seven or eight years. I started, oh. I started, I started, I started working at FFG in 2010. Yeah, that's, yeah, we were in the game industry at that point. So. Yeah. Yeah, the first I had heard of y'all was with Descent, the second edition, uh, and you guys had a lot of input into that. Yep. And it seems that that's kind of the games you gravitate towards are games with miniatures and killing stuff or fighting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually, thema- highly thematic games tell stories, and we just that's how we got into games from the theme, really. Miniatures so, and dice. Yeah. And co-op stuff. Well, as far as I can tell, you may be the only brother designers that are out there. Uh, There's some, but like they, they don't do as consistent designs, I guess, together. There's some like team up once in a while think, with their siblings. I think we're the only twin pair of designers. Yeah, maybe. Know, yeah, so. they, like, that's probably... <laughs> well, how do you do that with like out killing each other? Because me and my uh, brother, I don't think we could design a game. It's rough, yeah. It's not, it's not, we have to kind of split up tasks in the sense of like, okay, well, here's the theme we're going to go for. Put together something and we'll play it and see how it goes. And, and I'm kind of like a workhorse where I just I can't relax, so I'm always working on something. So I'll usually put together a prototype and we'll play it together. Adam will burn it down and say, what's wrong with it? And then we'll try again. And that kind of process. And, so it's, and since we do a lot of co-ops, he likes to focus on the AI and yeah. stuff, and I like to focus on the player side of things, so we kind of split up tasks But don't, But don't expect us not to fight. We, we argue oh, all yeah. the time. We're just, we're bickering little children, and we just can't get grow up out of that. Yeah. So That's why we don't do more <laughs> games. People think we do a lot of games, we do way more if we, yeah. you know, so <laughs> if we didn't fight as much. But you definitely <laughs> like the theme. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so we've seen uh, kind of a street fighting game, mm-hmm. and then we saw um, the Police, yeah, you know all the tropes, and now we have a superhero game. Is is there are, are, like you just planning to go through all these different themes? Well, it's mostly, it's, yeah, mostly stuff. We just kind of revisit our childhood of what like excited us growing up, and we were always into comics. and And I, I came into game design through writing, so I was always you know I wanted to be a novelist. So I always write stuff. So world building is kind of a natural you know interest of ours. So we just always look at what theme we want to do next, and then build a game around that. So. And Hour of Need, right now, it's on Kickstarter. You can find a link in the description here. This is a superhero game where you're building the universe from the ground up. Yeah. That must be tough to not, it like, is. carbon copy It is. It's, well, it's, it's, a, it's a really hard uh, line to walk because you can't get too close to people, ca- people who, or characters people like because they'll, they'll just like, oh, those are knockoff characters. But if you go too weird and, you know, like, abs- ab- um, they obscure. Have nothing, they have nothing to relate yeah, to. Yeah, they'll them. have no, no anchor to the comic and, books and, they grew up with. Yeah, so and the, the comic, uh, you know, world out there has, has done so many different kinds of characters. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much ground has already been laid. Every so you, power's been done. You got to yeah. find new ways to kind of do it. So we just have different backstories to our like our speedster is a super speed character, but there's a different backstory to her about how that power works and everything. So it's mostly just approaching the characters in a new way, even though they might look like tropes essentially. So, but it is hard to think of like cool names that haven't been taken yet. <laughs> and we're definitely now in an era where superhero games are popular. A yeah, decade yeah. ago, there was nothing out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so as as we play these games. To me, the the difficulty of superheroes when I used to run a superhero RPG was the fact that they operate sometimes in three dimensions. Yeah. So when you have a, uh, a sword and sorcery type thing, the, the guy with the sword comes up and just hits somebody. Mm. Here you have someone who could fly above. Yeah. So wh- how difficult is that to work so that you don't have the problem that DC has where Superman's more powerful than everybody else? Yeah. yeah, we definitely abstract some of that stuff in this game especially. Like, for example, the board. Some some have had people say that they thought the board was kind of strange because you're it's kind of zoomed out like, and you're not sure, actually, yeah. you know, taking up the position on the board that, you know, like a dungeon crawler might be where you're in a room or something. Something. Right. So we wanted to zoom out to say, you know, you're covering this whole city. You're flying over buildings, jumping from building to building, doing all these different things that superheroes would do, and abstracting it so you don't have to actually play out. Well, I'm flying, so I'm more powerful than you because you have to run. Yeah, because like Gorilla can't fly in the game, but Gorilla has access to like like different types of vehicles and helicopters Motorcycle. and stuff, <laughs> and he can like travel like really quietly, really fast. So it just abstracts those powers in different ways, but it gives them flavor through the through the artwork and through the cards and their backstories and everything. So yeah, card play is a great way to abstract a lot of those things and, and the arc kind of tells you the story about what's happening. But elegant gameplay is way more important than just simulating that theme because yeah. the differentiation doesn't really matter in the long run. It's more just how fun is this to play and do you feel like a hero? And uh, the game is a cooperative game, and this is, seems to be your bread and butter. You like games where people work together? Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. a trap we get kind of caught in because we, we have other ideas outside of that, but we just tend to always, we put more work on us because a lot of co-op games are harder to design because you have to design the player side and the AI side and make them work cohesively. And they're usually and, very content heavy. Yeah, to yeah. Design more Lots of content. Stuff yeah. To play through. Um, so eventually, you know, someday we'd like to do a competitive game because yeah. it'd probably be a little easier to we do. Have, yeah, <laughs> we have ideas for them, but we just, we, we try to listen to uh, fans that like our stuff and 
they ask for certain games, like, well, we could do a, a co-op game like that. So it's just it's balancing that line between what, what drives us creatively and also what we think people want to buy from us. So, Well, this game feels like a bit of a... It's just a, a smaller game than some of the bigger ones you've yeah. done. It's a, you, know, you can see the box size here, mm -hmm. although there is a lot of content that you can add <laughs> yeah. on to it <laughs> yep. and all. And um, do you, when you make these games, are you looking for that epic experience and then you're just trying to compact it? This one specifically, yes, yeah. because we, this we, product was designed to be a more accessible price point and rule set for more pro approachability given the theme. Yeah, and we did uh, like Alter Quest in Brook City, which had these big boards that took up a lot of table space, and that, it, it was cool, a cool game, but we wanted to make sure that anybody, could, you know, more people can play our games, and if you don't have a giant table, you can't play that. I mean, you <laughs> played Brook City at Gen Con, you, I think it's, it's so a massive, space. It's a massive table space. So we like to kind of condense the player experience to a smaller table space, and also break our pro this one, for example, provide like two player starter kits so you can play the game at a cheaper price point. Oh, that's if you interesting. Want to try it out. Yeah. So, yeah, in the Kickstarter, there's this is the four player box, but you can also get a two player standalone expansion, which just adds to this game and makes it a six player game, or you can just play it two yeah, player. Yeah, it's just got two heroes, one villain, and two issues, so you can kind of try the game out, see if it's for you. And if you like it, you just buy another, another your core game, or you buy another two player expansion, just keep adding to your content, essentially. All right, folks, if you want to see how the game plays, we did a live play on our channel. You can just check out Hour of Need live play and find out how the game works and see if we won. <coughs> um, or see who lost it for you. <laughs> well, Thank you guys very much for coming on. I wish you great success. We look forward to seeing what happens in the future. Let's get back to the show. On today's episode of Charlie... On today's... Charlie's Quicker... I'm going to be looking at... Shadow... It is a silly place. One of the best games of all time. Don't anyone tell me differently. It's a good game. What's the deadly? Tabletop board games is what I do. I'll give you the lowdown with my review. The reality of strategy is part of my mentality. Winning for a salary, got trophies in my gallery. Throwing dice, don't play nice, losing won't suffice. Storage device, name your price, game is paradise. Mm, you smell that? Hot stew. Charlie gonna hit you with the quick review. In Shadows Over Camelot, you choose a character like Sir Tristan, Sir Percival, Sir PayPal, and King Arthur. Each one has unique abilities, unique things they can do. You work together as a team. You're trying to beat the forces of evil. But beware, one of you could be traitor! This game is trying to beat you up, but it's fun and it's worth it when you beat it. Look at how cool this board is! I love the look, the feel, the theming of this board game. <laughs> look at this rule book. I love it! This game's amazing! Oh, it's, 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 it's great! They could have easily made these cards. Man, the fact that they did actual miniatures and these little details are really cool. Look at this guy. Can you imagine how good it would feel to scratch your back with that thing? Do you have gold dice? None of that counting of dots. Definitely rate this as one of my funnest games. It's lacking a lot as far as like the card mechanics, gathering cards, that kind of feels a little weak. Other than that, this is a really fun game. I really like this game. I present to you your own! King. I give this one two I would do it after you get the table. All right, going. baby. You would what now? You got what? cards, son. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to 10 for 10. Uh, I've got here a, uh, we call him Replacement Tom. Or bargain, <laughs> bargain vassal. Bargain vassal. I don't even have any hats on or fancy hats. I know, hats. that's why. Where do you think the bargain part comes from? That's right. If you had that juice and flow, that style, <laughs> you'd have a hat. <laughs> Maybe a tie if it was I a weekend. I can't cover this up with a hat, sorry. Oh, excuse Whoa, me. All right. Isn't that great, hey, huh? At least I have so, uh -huh. we've got a 10 for 10 here, and I've got Sam, I've got Roy, and I figured, you know, these guys love their music, especially... Uh, Heavy music, and, and uh, oh, I wanted dear. to make this a music related 10 for 10. So I've got 10 bands here, guys. Okay. And uh, you are going to try to pick the ones that came out with an album earlier in history. <laughs> this is not necessarily when the bands were formed, which is usually a, a little bit earlier than that. Yeah. But it is when they the first album they came out with dropped. Got it. So if you win, that means you're older. 
Wow. <laughs> I, I will say being older does have an advantage, and uh, but also being well-versed in music. So. And not being a poser. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Bam, son! Here we go. I'm probably going to turn out to be the poser. Are you going to turn out to be the poser? I don't know. I think so. I, this is fairly old. It trends yeah. from about uh, the late 70s to like mid 90s. Okay. I almost guarantee so you, you you're going to know born. more about you these bands. Born yet. It just depends. Depends on what bands he picks. Here we go, guys. The I, was bands a, are. I was very specific genre. Oh, okay, yeah, you might be in trouble. AC, <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Pearl Jam, Corn, Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, Metallica, Black Sabbath, Anthrax, Nirvana, and Iron Maiden. Oh, and boy. again here, older is better, folks. Older so Roy, because better. you are at a slight disadvantage. I am going to allow you to. What do you think? We what do you what do you say? We we give the kid a little a little boost. You want to sure. give him a little boost? Sure. He right. wins most of I, the time anyway. I, I have. You don't want to give him a boost? I'll give him a boost. I don't care. <laughs> like a booster seat. Because he's a baby. <laughs> All right. Tell you what, I'm kid. Not short. You, you get to pick two of these that you're going to use the powers of, and I'll let you pick first. Okay. All right, so the powers are, you've seen the game, obviously. This guy's the middleman. You put him on a card hoping it is in the middle of the pack, the five or the six. And that one never works. It, from what it I've worked seen. last time. And it's also five bonus points, which is huge. <laughs> All right? This guy here is going to let you look at a card. Mm -hmm. You can either do it at the end of the game, mm -hmm. or you can do it while, when you're about to take a card and divvy it up. We give it to yourself or Sam. You can do it whenever. And cool. then this guy here lets you sort at the end only four cards instead of five. Oh, I need to stop looking at this. And if they are in order, I don't need their you are going to get five input. bonus points. All right. All right. Uh, could you hand me my uh, phone over there so I can check my data, my data? data. I'm going to mix it up Thank just because I know Sam always takes the, the two. I'm going to take the two that Sam takes. Yeah, break them up. Go ahead, man. I'm going to let you be middleman for once. All right, I'll be the middleman. Oh, man. he just he robbed he you just of your power. threw everything on his head. All right, there you go. So you are going to start, and again, you can, when you take one of the open cards, keep it or give it to Sam. Yep. Oh, man. So let me pull up my list here. There it is. Woo -hoo! All right, so what are we thinking? We got Black Sabbath, Anthrax, Nirvana, and Iron Man, and all of them pop bands. Come on, Kennedy. Oh, Have you goodness. heard all of these? Well, they are pop bands. They're popular? Because they're all popular. But they are all metal or metal adjacent or simply just heavy music. Uh, I mean, Pearl Jam right. is alternative. This is, this, I think all of these would be considered metal in their perspective. I'm definitely trying to figure out the um, age contemporary of all this stuff. Periods. Except for up. Nirvana and Pearl Jam, I would yeah, agree with I guess that. So. But again, I wanted to lean this way because of I know you guys both enjoy cool. uh, this music. So cool beans, it's cool like beans. first first album is what we're looking for. So like basically the very oldest band is the best. Yes. <sighs> that is the that is the long and short of it. Yes. I think. I think Nirvana's not as old as some of these. So I'm going to give this to Sam. All right. So you That's give it to Sam. Idea. Very good. All right, Sam, what are you doing? Black I'm Sabbath. Taking Black Sam is going for the, the big dog's Black Sabbath. Uh, and it's back to you, buddy. So you've got Anthrax. You've got Iron Maiden. I really don't know. Both of them from the 90s. Um, I'm going to look at one of them. Which one? Which one of these guys is the looking one? The book guy? This guy is an oh, inspector. Guy. Look at him, man. He's, oh, he's solved straight up cases. That is, that is straight up inspector. Moriarty. He's about to I'm holmes it up. I'm gonna inspect Anthrax. All right, don't secretly. don't inspect it too closely. <laughs> don't get to into your that face. white pattern on you. Hmm. Don't look at it right up close. That, certainly don't breathe in while inspecting it. <laughs> giving I'm it giving to you Sam. Anthrax as well. Hmm. All right. You well, don't got Anthrax. That's a nice uh, clue there for you, Sam. I guess. No, pff, I didn't need that clue. Dude. Ooh, he's telling you, you suck. Give me, uh, give me. Uh, All right, what do you want? Guns and Roses, Led Zeppelin, Iron Led Maiden. Zeppelin. You want the lead? Yeah. All right, so Sam's already got four cards here. That so means I'm pretty much gonna get the once rest. he oh, gets man. to five. You I don't keep want the rest. Some of these other ones. Ugh. 
So you only have access to two things. You might want to give him one of them. You've got Iron Maiden, Guns N' Roses. Appetite for destruction. Yeah, but I don't want him to take Better check Metallica, yourself. so I'm going to... Take You're about to welcome this. that jungle? You are welcoming the jungle. And you've got Sam Pearl Jam and Iron Maiden. Uh, I'm pretty... Well, I know which one out of those five is the oldest. All right. I cannot get to it. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get to it. Um, maybe I will. So you've got Pearl Jam, Iron Maiden. What do you want to do? Let's see. Well, I know which one of those two is older. You always just give him the other one then. I could, but then he'll just take everything else. Mm. This is an interesting choice because you can end it right now. He gets the other, the the other right. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can delay it, hope to snag something along the way. Yeah. So you have you've got a. If I'm re if I'm seeing it correctly, and I may not be, but. You've got a lot of these that are grouped together in a really tight group. A little yeah. bit. And then you've got a couple outliers that are on either side. I do. That's usually how I do it. So. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, sure you do. I'm just randomly so. trying to move some stuff around. No, you should have a Let's decent see. idea of who's old anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you got? Him, I'm, gonna, Sam? I'm, I'm, I'm take, breaking Sam's brain. I'm going to take Iron Maiden. You're taking I'm the taking Maiden. Iron Maiden. All right. I that means you, buddy, are going to get, this is a sad day, Metallica Good. from Sam. Sam, what's up, man? Metal! You're getting Pearl Jam, cool. you are getting Corn, and you are getting, for those about to rock, we salute you. Their first album was actually Voltage, I think. So I get to go, um, man, I get to pick where, where I think the five or six is, right? Yeah, and you can okay. do it on your own or yours. And now you... You only have to pick four. Can look at all these here, sort four... And you can do it whichever way you want. I don't care. Just mm -hmm. let me know which one's the oldest, which one's the newer, whatever. As long as it's... Uh... So I get to keep one out. Yeah, you'll still count the points on the back, but you don't have to sort it Ugh. in order to try to earn the five bonus points. Oldest to newest? That works. Oldest to newest. So the numbers should be dropping. Let me go with this. I don't that. like it. I don't like my and options. This. That. And that. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, can you move it this way just yeah, a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Let's move it so that we can put it on the camera here. So Sam's going with Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, Anthrax. After that, Nirvana, the newest. Let's do this. I don't know, guys. All right, what do you got? So you're doing AC/DC, the oldest, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Corn. That looks pretty good, kid. It's just wild right, guesses. Sam, what are you doing? Dark. Where's the middle one? And it could be Pearl Jam. Oh boy. Um, this is the difficult one here. Well, you I got think. a two. You can hit two of them. One, two, three. I'm gonna cheat. Well, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna look. I do what I want. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. Four. Hmm. Jeez Louise. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with. Metallica as either the five or the six. Okay. All right, guys, who wants to reveal theirs first? You want to do yours? Nah, I don't care. You can do yours, Sam. Black Sabbath. Oh, that sucks. Is nine. That's going to be the ten. Wow. Yeah. Led Ugh. Zeppelin is I'm already ranked for so many points. He has the nine I knew and these the were the ten. two oldest, but yeah. I, I just... So man, it's Led Zeppelin sucks. in 69, Black Sabbath 71. Oh, there's no man, way. I'm I had it all close. right except for these I have two. all the worst ones. Sucks. Wow, very that's nice. not very, very nice. Points there. Led Zeppelin is slightly Ready? older, yes. Yeah. Eight, Eight is good. Oh, there no we go. I think this is the six. Yep. Yeah! I got it. Owned. And Corn is definitely the newest. So Corn 94 with Pearl Jam I, being the second place. You kicked out Pearl Jam. Yeah. That was good. You yeah, came out at 91. You messed up just two slots as well, just like I did. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, Sam, you were just on it. But uh, That's a yeah, massive, Led Zeppelin's first album swing. is a couple of years uh, older. older. It came out technically yeah. in the '60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Black Which Sabbath the in '71. Oh, Black Sabbath and yeah, Black Sabbath. And then AC/DC yeah. came out in '76. Iron Maiden in '80. Like Metallica '83. Anthrax '84. But I gave you this. You did. 
I found out also what the original title was supposed to be for Kill 'Em All, which I can't repeat here. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was, was like you guys. You I might, don't remember what the it company. Was. Like I think the publisher was uh, the 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 record producer was like, mm, we need to retitle it. Yeah, oh, we appreciate well. it, guys. But <laughs> 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 always. Uh, Guns N' Roses came out in '87. Like I said, I, Appetite for Destruction, Nirvana '89. Mm-hmm. Which I was very surprised. I, I thought there was more space between those two. Yeah. Because I know Nirvana's bigger albums. Well, this is Bleach was big, but yeah, yeah. Like you know, the big. They, I think of them as an early '90s band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they came out in '89. Yeah. And then Pearl Jam, early '90s for sure. They came out in '91. Um. So yeah, the the outlier here for me, which is definitely like the drop where I stopped listening, is Corn. Yeah. Between '91 and '94. I, I lost something there because. Well, I didn't really ever like corn. I didn't. I didn't, sure. I didn't like this because I knew it was gonna be. I knew it was gonna be. That's the newest. It was gonna be new. So yeah. I'm like, it's not really the newest by it. far. It's only three years, but it is the newest. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sam, you wrecked the kid, even with uh, him uh, having a little extra oomph. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Well, you almost had it, man. You almost sorted it right. So cool. There you go. That is ten for ten, everybody. Sweet. Keep on going. Run. Hey guys, Joe here. I am super excited to show off the artwork in this game. It is called Parks and it's by Keymaster Games. So right before heading out to Gen Con, I started hearing rumblings about this game. I knew nothing about it. Um, I know it started coming up on my YouTube feed, on various websites, and so I looked into it further and I was shocked to find out that it was based off of artwork that was commissioned by a company called 59 Parks. And so what they did was they got a bunch of artists to, you know, create a bunch of artwork for the national parks across America. And they created a shop where you could buy prints, for example, you know, all this type of merchandise with this beautiful artwork on it. And they took some of the proceeds from from the, you know, sales of these items and they actually sent it to the various parks. Looking at the artwork, I fell in love. Found out it's a worker placement game. The table presence alone is stunning. I was able to pick up a play mat at Gen Con. Um, The way it looks on the table, it definitely has a wow factor. So there's so many artists on this game and I'm not gonna go ahead and single them all out, but there's an awesome page again in the rule book that lists them all with their websites. um, So you can go check them out for yourself. I also recommend just going to the 59 Parks website. It's 59parks.net so you can Again, if you haven't seen the game yet, you can go to the website, you can look at all the prints for all the parks that they produced uh, for the game. And so you could get an idea of <laughs> the spectacular artwork that I'm talking about. Well, that's all for today, guys. Remember to check me out on all the various social media. I'll list it somewhere on the screen. And until next time, enjoy your day, guys. What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McKeck and this is Smashing Buttons and Slamming Cards. This is a segment where I talk about a video game I love and I connect it to a board game I love. And this week I want to talk about Backyard Baseball. I used to play this game on the Game Boy Advance, I think it was, and I just always had a blast. It is a video game where you're playing as pro players, but as kids. And I was a kid when I was playing it, so that was pretty cool. And sometimes there would be uh, batting power-ups and pitching power-ups. And you could create your own team and just play as the pro players, which was really awesome. It was cool. It was fun. I'm a baseball fan, so that was always great. I would like to connect that to Baseball Highlights 2045. In Baseball Highlights, it is a card uh, drafting game. No, not drafting. It's a deck building game. And, well, I guess you're drafting the cards, too. But anyway, so it's a deck-building game, and you're creating your own sort of baseball team filled with cyborgs and robots and what's called naturals, which are the human players. And again, in this game, they can have their own little special abilities and little pitching power-ups, batting power-ups, and it's just a ton of fun. Both of these games just, I don't know, they bring out the innocence of baseball, right? And both games try to elevate the excitement of playing the sport baseball. So anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out my podcast over at Room 51. I'll see you next time.
All right, everybody, we're going to be unboxing some goodies here. I brought two Woo! things over from our sealed games section. One uh, that I hope Sam will like and one that I was looking forward to. So, mm. Sam, this one is Sky Tier. I think that it might be looks... Sky Tear. Yeah, actually. that might be too as well. Tom called it Sky Tear. Yeah, but it looks like from that cover, I want to say Sky, Sky Tear. Tear. And yeah. then one I brought for myself here that I, I was excited about. Kare Kare with some buff parrots on the cover. Oh, that's right. I remember looking at that when we were yeah. doing our... Uh... Our Essen coverage. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's crack them open and then we'll go back and forth and show these. All right. We'll do. Let's do it. So let's see what we got. This one looks to be a tile laying game. You gave me even the more sealed one. Is there a knife? Where's that knife at? Man, just Somebody give me a sharp the object. power of metal. Man, I can't have the power of metal. My coke, my coke nails are. <laughs> I cut my nails, man. I don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Come on, let me get down with the shrink wrap. Come on, let me get down with the shrink wrap. Sky tear. Open up the box. I let the bits flow out. <laughs> get up. Come on, down with the shrink wrap. <laughs> All right. Wow, these are strangely looks... shaped bits. <laughs> Look at these bits. I don't know what they are meant to be. <laughs> But peanuts, maybe. I maybe gotta they're, be peanuts. Um, they're not printed on this side, <laughs> and that's not bueno. <laughs> uh, all right, so wow, you just went like total Spanglish there for a second. That is that's no not bu bueno. That's not bueno. <laughs> uh, so it's got some wooden bits. I really like these bits. I like the colors they're using for the player colors here too. Check this out. They have a dark green and a light green color as the player colors. That's that's that, that's a cool combo. Those are though. Nice. Yeah, that's that's good. I like that. There's a, a beige kind of, but it's like grayish beige, and then that really popping orange. I like these uh, player colors a lot. This looks cool. Uh, there's rules for three to eight, so it's a two-player game at its core. And then there's drafting and deck building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Oh my Man, gosh, sorry, he's got the, the hiccups. Getting down with the shrink wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Did you swallow a little this shrink wrap? Are you okay? <laughs> you can register your free SkyTear account. Huh. All right, yeah, because this is like a MOBA-inspired yeah, yeah, yeah. game. You can, tell, you can tell that from um, there's like three lanes in the battlefield. And, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. So that's cool, SkyTear. Um, that's the board. I mean, that's the book, and here's the board, rather. Whoa, that's a big oh, one. Oh, that's huge, man. All right, let's see. It's double-sided as well, so that's pretty cool. And Very nice. Oh, that's a good-looking board, looks man. Like that really pops on the screen. Yeah, it does. And here's some Bunch tokens, of tokens and stuff like that. Nice, let's see. And These then, are pretty good. It's pretty good quality. Oh, and we got some minis, huh? Minis. All right, well, while you struggle with that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some more things in mine here. Kare, kare. I've got some tiles here. These are just player aids, it looks like, and player colors. And then we've got a scoreboard in this one. That is a mess of a scoreboard. Good night. Look at the where the, where the number breaks are. Is insanity. One... I mean, it's every five, but across, there are 12, it looks like? That just, yeah, it... Oh, my goodness! It doesn't look symmetrical, but it is. It is, right, yeah. It, it, that's insane looking. That does. That yeah. looks insane. That looks, that looks like I'm trying to solve a puzzle in Time Stories or something. This dude... Go ahead. Uh, I've got some tiles over here. These are nice, good quality tiles. I like the look of these. I like these tile laying games that have a car cartoony, um, you know, landscape type vibe to them. With the uh, dreaded no land included tile being my favorite. <laughs> Wormhole. Uh, and then just a bunch of tiles below that. That's pretty much all the components here are. And some nice artwork on the bottom of the box too. Oh, wait. Flip that. There you go. Uh, that's cool. Look at that. These minis are amazing. All right, let's check out the um, minis. I'll go ahead and just put them out there. Now, the way MOBA games work is, I, I believe, and again, I don't know much about um, 
the this game in particular, but other mobile games that I've played, you have one hero, and then you also have a team of people that come with you, right? That work with you. So a lot of these down here are going to be the team members, and these guys up here look like they're going to be the uh, uh, the heroes or the champions. And then I don't know who this dude is, but he looks like a conglomeration of a number of different things, like Predator and uh, the bad guy in Diablo, yeah, and yeah. just a whole bunch of different stuff. So that looks cool. And uh, so then we have some cards here, which is go. probably going to be... Oh, this one's a bear. Yeah, he looks. I cool. can barely contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. he also looks like he's dancing. If I do this, uh, dun, this is dun, dun, this is unfortunate. Dun, dun, I'm not not dun, not digging the uh, down with it. Down with it. Down, 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 down with it. Okay, you're making the bear dance. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm not down with this graphic oh, design. This cat is dancing too. <laughs> he's calling somebody out on the dance floor. He's like, "Hey, you." Come on, dance with me. His name is Sakoshi. Sakoshi, the yeah. dance beast. And then there's a... I don't, I'm not liking the uh, graphic design on these cards. Let's see, the graphic design on these cards. I'm, I'm okay with the artwork, but I just don't... It looks you mean very, like the layout, graphic yeah, layout? Yeah, it yeah. has that throwback 1998 collectible card game look. Yeah. Artwork is good, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I do like the artwork in it, yeah, but you're right. The la the layout of the card just... It's, it's just too clean, almost. It's It feels old, yeah, yeah. It's a little sort of just dated. But hey, you know, as long as the information is clear and, and busyness is out of the way. But yeah, you're right. This this doesn't look exciting. Right. The artwork. I mean, not not the artwork, the, the layout. That's all we're talking about. The right. game looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Minis look good. Characters and heroes look good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, a neat looking this is game. Good artwork, you know. Double kill. Grapple. <laughs> that sounds so so bland after double kill. Oh yeah, well grapple. <laughs> Presence. It's pretty good. Unfamiliar terrain. So this is called Sky Tear. Sky Tear. Based yeah, on a MOBA type video game. This isn't yep. actually there is no video game for it as far as I know. Yep. But it's it's that style of game. This looks cool. Yeah. Looks cool. I'm really looking forward to giving that one a and try. And then, uh, so, you've just seen us talk about Kare Kare, a tile laying game, and Sky Tear, card driven miniatures game inspired by mobile video games. Quite a bit. Very uh, cool. Mouthful there. All right, everybody, we've got one more chunk of a uh, couple of segments here for you, and then we'll wrap it up. We'll see you in a bit. Happy yeah. breakfast, everyone. This week, I'm going to talk to you about the Harry Potter two player dueling game. So, this isn't the bigger one that's cooperative. This is a competitive 1v1 game. It still uses the deck building, so you are still starting off with basic cards, earning coins, some health, some damage, uh, but you're dealing that against your opponent, uh, or healing yourself obviously, using the coins to buy new and better cards that you're going to shuffle in and make your deck better. Now, I think the bigger brother, the cooperative one, is the more fun experience and there's also the same problems sort of thematically. For instance, some of the characters that you can get as allies are sort of uh, Draco Malfoy. Now I'm not sure why they'd be help. Uh, uh, someone like that would be helping say a Gryffindor person to win a duel. It doesn't quite make sense. It's also a duel is 1v1. So you're building up the this pool of allies that's maybe helping you with items and, and spells that you're doing. But that doesn't quite make sense. If it's a 1v1 duel and that's a pr the practice that's going on, why have you got loads of allies like a, a toad, a, you know, Snape or something like that on your side? Anyway, let me know in the comments section below what games uh, where there's a little bit of the theming that you have to sort of just ignore that just for the fun to be had. And uh, that's the two player Harry Potter deck building game. And I'm Oliver East signing out. What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook. This is Board Game Evangelism, and we're spreading the good news of face to face fun. Today, I want to talk Black Rose Wars. This is a recent Kickstarter release that some people are just getting in their hands, but I was part of wave one, so I've had it for a little while. 
but I haven't gotten to the table as much as I would like, and I want to fix that. And I especially want to fix that by, by playing this with my wife, who is relatively new to gaming still, and I don't want to throw her into the deep end. So this is my plan to bring her up to Black Rose Wars. Uh, I want to start with a game like Takenoko, which seems like a total non sequitur, but the reason why I want to start with that is with the hexagonal movement around the board, uh, which it's a little different, but you got that feel as far as the movement. But the biggest thing is the objectives that you're trying to complete. The quests will be the parallel in Black Rose Wars. So I think that's going to be a really good first game because it's light, it's fun, and uh, it's cute. After that, I think deck building is important. She's played uh, Star Realms before. I'd like to play a game of either Dominion or Mystic Veil with her just so she has a little bit more familiarity with deck building. And that's not going to be a difficult concept because managing those cards is a big part of the game and I don't want the actual deck building to be a hindrance. Then programming. Tiny Epic Mechs I think is a really good fit for that because it's forgiving as far as the programming. So it's a good first step. If you get bumped off of your program then you go into ad hoc mode and you get to choose what you want to do every turn. So it's not really that big of a deal. And some, In fact sometimes it can be a, a pretty good benefit. And then I want to probably go with Adrenaline because now you've got the area control damage mechanism which is the same as it is in Black Rose Wars. And you're also just managing the actual concept of attacking each other which you have in Tiny Epic Mechs as well. So that's my plan to build up to Black Rose Wars. Let me know if you think I'm way off base or you, if you have any other recommendations. You can also find me online at all the different social media outlets at Macronova Games and enjoy the rest of your breakfast. All right, everybody. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. A big thanks to all of our contributors, of course, and to you for chatting it up, for <laughs> joining us, for uh, playing along to all our silliness. We are going to uh, have more videos for you today. We're going to have more videos through the weekend, of course, and we will see you on Monday for our 24-hour live play. Marathon. We've got guests we've got party games serious games we've got uh there's a lot there's some surprises in there for you serious too. serious giveaway prizes serious too. giveaways so definitely come on back for that again that is on monday yeah. we'll be here and we hope to see you here as well yep. so i am z garcia sam healy and we'll see you on the next one you've been watching the dice tower see you on the flip side folks take care Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.